Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and I'm going to talk about the energy trilemma, which is how three different factors impact on energy. So first of all, let's discuss what energy is and what it means to people. Many of the things that people take for granted are based on model energy, say food supply, transport, light, heat, uh, goods that our ancestors never even dreamed of, new very jobs rather than the backbreaking toil of our forefathers and particularly our foremothers. Medical treatment. Obviously, in the time of COVID, this is important. And people in the West and the OECD take all this for granted. They've had it for several generations, can't even remember what life was like before it. And people in Asia, Latin America, Africa, the developing world want this too. And they deserve it. And people don't care how these services are provided. They really don't. They just want them cost-effective, safe, reliable, convenient and clean. Not too much to ask for, is it? People don't want to consume hydrocarbons. Really don't. They just want all the things that hydrocarbons enable them to have. The moment another technology comes along that's going to give it in a cleaner, cheaper, more reliable, more convenient form, hydrocarbons are going to go away for this particular field. It's happened before. It will happen. However, at the moment, there aren't existing technologies that can do all the things that hydrocarbons can do. They can do some of them. This might change in the future. And... Stone Age didn't end because of uh, cavemen running out of stone, said Sheikh Gamani in the Saudi oil minutes in the 1970s. Plenty of stone still being used around the world, though. So let's talk about energy and how it comes. So this is the U.S. energy flow diagram from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, top research institute in the United States. This looks at how much energy is consumed in America. It's measured in quadrillions of British thermal units, or quads, and there's 100.2 of them, which is kind of handy for percentages. So you've got petroleum, biomass coal, natural gas, geothermal, wind, hydro, nuclear, and solar. All of these, or some of these, go into electricity generation. So all of these up here go into electricity. A fair portion of the natural gas does. Virtually all of the coal. Virtually none of the oil. Very little of the biomass. So 37% of energy in the United States, only 37% goes into electricity. The rest is used elsewhere. Then you've got who uses it. Residential, so that's domestic consumers in their homes. Commercial, so that would include also some public service, so example, hospitals, government departments as well as shops, offices, etc. Industrial, uh, you know, people who make everything from steel, cars, through whatever else they wish to ma need to make. And transportation, which is moving goods around. So most oil goes into transportation, but a fair amount of it goes into industrial and some of the other things. Also, there's some oil that goes into non-combustibles. Um, and what we have is the amount that actually produces energy services, and then there's rejected energy, which is due to basic inefficiencies that are in there. So if someone's really smart, they can try to reduce this pile to reduce, to give us more bang for our bucks and reduce waste and increase efficiency. So now we come to the energy trilemma. So the three aspects to it. Costs, reliability, environmental impact. And generally, with a trilemma, you can kind of pick any two. So we'll talk a little bit about what these things are and how they, uh, they work. So first of all, let's look at costs, the yellow circle. So costs must be affordable for energy to be given to everyone, to avoid energy poverty, a situation where people have to spend a last large portion of their income on energy, uh, and cannot spend it on any other things. People have to worry about whether to heat the house or not. Worry you heat your house or feed your kids. That's a horrible situation to be in, and no one should be in that place. So the cost would include upfront capex. So this is when you build the energy uh, plant. At the beginning, you have to pay capital expenditure. OPEX and maintenance, operating expenditure and maintenance to keep the thing up and running. Fuel costs. If fuel is part of your particular equation, uh, you obviously have to pay for it. Decommissioning. At the end of the plant's life, you have to decommission it, take it apart, recycle, and remediate the ground to make sure that everything is as it was before. Scalability. Does the plant only come in size triple XL, like the majority of nuclear plants, or can it be small scalable, like uh, gas or wind or solar? What about subsidies? Some uh, electricity and energy plants are subsidized, whereas others actually pay taxes and uh, give positivity to the exchequer. And also, if you have to import fuel or import some of the technology, you have to pay import costs 
and there may be a currency issue there, particularly if you have to pay for something in dollars and your income is in another currency. Next, we move on to security. Energy must be reliable to ensure supply meets demand. At the moment in California, you're having these horrible power cuts where people in possibly the richest place on earth can't guarantee their electricity. That's appalling. Now, factors would include things like copper time and intermittency. Does the um, plant work 90, 95% of the time? Weather dependency. Obviously, this is something that affects renewables. If the wind doesn't blow right in the right way, uh, the turbines will not turn and you will not have generation. Now, most modern wind turbines are about 35, 40% efficient. But what happens to the 65 to 60% uh, when they're not working? Uh, and obviously, with solar, solar only works when the sun shines. Seasonality. Hydroelectricity, for example, is affected by seasonality, particularly if it rains in the winter or in the rainy season. And it may be dry, and during the dry season, you may not have enough water to generate the, the, the appropriate amount of hydro. Responsiveness. Hydro is very responsive. You use quite a lot of pump water storage, which can give you electricity virtually instantly. Same with gas. Whereas coal and nuclear plants take quite a long time to ramp up, so you try to keep them going as long as possible for baseload. And then depending on import, both for fuel, if you are dependent on importing gas from another country with whom you may have difficult relations, that's not a good place to be. Also for importing components technology. If you are importing um, technology or importing uh, a plant which is designed and built in another country, you need to maintain relationships with them to keep that plant going over the plant's life. And then environmental impact. So factors would include pollution, things like nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides, particulates, etc., which seriously damage people's health. Waste products, which may be hazardous or toxic. Land use, how much land does your plant cover? Human health impacts, uh, impacts on wildlife, and safety of the plant. Oh, and also there's CO2. If you're concerned about climate change, you need to worry about how much CO2 this uh, uh, plant impacts. But it's not just CO2 OPEX, which is what uh, plant generates every day. There's also the impact of uh, building it. How much cement do you need? How many uh, truck movements do you need? Um, how much fuel is used in generating the, the, uh, the components of the plant? So, and then also there's the uh, um, CO2 impacts of maintaining it via fossil fuel vehicles. If it's very maintenance heavy, that's also there. So it's not just CO2 for fuel. CO2 elsewhere. Looks complicated, doesn't it? So what you have is basically so you can have something which is clean and cheap, but not reliable. You can have something cheap and reliable, but dirty. Or you can have something which is reliable and clean, but expensive. In the middle, we have Holy Grail or La La Land. And here we have a farting unicorn to represent how difficult that is. Now, hopefully farting unicorns can be found and we can find this, or we can move closer to this or we can make fewer compromises. But this is not guaranteed. So the key point with the energy trilemma is there are no ideal answers, Tanya. Thank you very much.